Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Mavericks. Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well, enjoying yourselves. We got a nice um, pre summer uh, repair for you, and this is a MacBook. This is the A1706. This is a 2017 MacBook Pro. It's not powering on, and we wanted to see why it's not powering on, right? Uh, it's a local customer. Uh, we are actually located right outside of Washington, D.C., in uh, Northern Virginia, Alexandria. If you guys are interested, um, you can go ahead and check us out. If you guys are actually out of state, we have lots of mail-ins. We show videos of uh, mail-in repairs and data recoveries. And we have all the contact information in the description below if you guys are interested. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to do a MacBook repair, MacBook not charging, MacBook not powering on, data recoveries, you name it, we do it. So let's take a look to see what this MacBook is giving an issue for. The USB-C tester is it's going to check to see how the MacBook uh, likes the electricity coming in right to see how it's trying to power on and why it's not powering on so we can see a lot of things and we can get uh, ideas based on that once this is plugged in so we plug it in and we see we're getting our correct voltage on the side there you might have seen one from 5 and then it goes to 20 which is good so you have a conversion happening but stuck at 0.01 amps um, and we check both ports because uh, we have other videos talking about it there are multiple ports that have a circuit that goes behind it and if you get different readings in different ports that can indicate something very specific there um, but that's not the case so we're getting the same reading off of each one we're getting 20 volts and 0.01 amps there's something causing a short for that not to be getting higher amps because if you get a higher amps that's current current will uh, power on the macbook as well as charge the battery the higher that you get you're probably looking at maybe 1.8 to 2 amps looks very healthy with everything plugged in so um and we're getting 0.01 amps so this is this model is a little bit interesting because it does not have firmware on it there's no security um, that is uh, built onto the processor or baked onto the logic board itself there so we don't have to worry about t2 or flashing firmware on this one for data recovery and stuff like that that would matter more and we usually give options for data recovery and repairs anyway but this one and we're interested in doing a fix so let's go ahead let's open up let's take a look to see what's going on move the bottom cover um and it might be a little bit ho hard to show but we see there is actually a swollen battery it's a little bit thicker than the others it's called a spicy pillow and it's for the reason exactly <laughs> why <laughs> you would uh, call it that because it's a little bit thicker than the other ones right um, now you could say maybe oh that's the problem right so let's uh, let's see because usually it's not when you're getting that type of voltage um, usually it's not the problem based on that it's rare if it's maybe the whole thing is is, is thicker or it's not charging or it, it would be inconsistent but let's see so if we disconnect this and let's also disconnect uh the little um connection the plus and minus oops the wrong screwdriver and also disconnect the plus and minus there so it's totally disconnected now this model would turn on without a battery um, certain models don't so like the the bigger ones usually don't like the 15 inch uh, or at least of these ones right um, the M the M models Apple Silicon is a little bit different well, let's see so if I plug it in now we're probably gonna get the same thing right because we have a logic board issue and that is the case so we still have the same thing nothing spinning nothing's coming out even with uh, the battery disconnected we will have to replace uh, the battery because it's always a hazard. Most likely when we turn this on, if we connect the battery, you'll see a service now. If not, it would be very, very soon. You'll see that because service now would indicate that there's a chemical imbalance with the battery and that's which happens. We don't see any obvious damage, no obvious uh, liquid spill here because it looks very clean for the most part. Let's go ahead and just remove the logic board and go from there. Okay, so we got the logic board out and we don't see anything crazy obvious on either side we want to take a look at the microscope because a visual inspection here is not good enough because your eyes are drawn to so many things right because there's so many little uh, components on the logic board itself there that it's very easy to miss so that's why we have mr microscope back there well not back well we have one right there and we have one right next to that one too but we don't want to go on a wild goose chase let's go ahead and see under the thermal cam because the thermal imaging can help indicate where a short may occur because um, if there's any type of short you'll see it on a thermal cam where it will flare up and it'll be very obvious it'll be like screaming it'll be like hey man look at me look at me i need help right it's looking for that let's take a look with our thermal cam and go from there under the thermal cam we see that there is um, an area that kind of flares up right when we plug it in it's pretty close to where like our fan connection is on the one side and if we flip it over let's go ahead and take a look at the back there 
and we see that there is also this other area. Uh, most likely these two areas are connected. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that on our board view. All right, so let's take a look at the board view. And we have this empty void, which is <laughs> this is uh, uh, where your fan connection is. And over close to that, because that's where we remember it to be, you have over here, this is a D6902. And this is the one that was flaring up under the thermal cam. Uh, one of the two, right? And um, it has uh, three connections. So it is a diode, um, so it will have uh, main points connected to, to major things. Um, we'll have two local connections, so we have a PV bus G3 hot, which is uh, the first pin here that's close to a uh, resistor, which is connected to that resistor, and another uh, test pad here. And then you'll also have um, another connection that's located next to another resistor, which is connected to another test pad. And our third connection isn't ground. Um, it actually goes somewhere else. So this, if we see, we can see the line of where it's going to go. And interesting enough, this does go to our U7000. And if you uh, were paying attention before in class, so everyone wake up. If, if, you're <laughs> if you're paying attention in class, you remember the last time uh, we saw the U7000, which was a moment ago, and that was uh, flaring up and causing a problem. If one is giving a problem, then it'll have another connected component showing that it's causing uh, an issue as well. Um, so that's why usually a thermal cam isn't the greatest thing for at least um, spotting an exact short of where it could exactly be because you have uh, connections to other parts of the board, right? One component just doesn't do one thing. It's usually connected to something else. Um, in this case, we have our U7000, which is your ISL. And you can see this has multiple connections uh, to multiple different things. That could still indicate that there could be a problem with this one. So it's causing the diode to flare up. So we did remove uh, the diode. And we can do this one because it's just a simple replacement on it. And, uh, you know, it's it's a component so it's one of the things you want to do first because the other one is a bga so you usually want to start with uh, the easiest one first or the one that you think might cause a problem because usually when there is a problem you might have a diode um that that's causing a failure you don't want a whole bga failure but unfortunately that's not the easy case because we did replace this and it still gave an issue and it was still pointing to our uh, u7000 which is our isl so our isl looks to have an issue so what we need to do is we need to do a replacement on it so when you remove it you'll see that there is uh, the ball grid array which is um, exposed there and when you replace these type of chips uh, you have to remove it completely you have to clean to make sure the surface is going to make a good uh, connection uh, if you don't do that, um, you'll just have the uh, not perfect connection. They won't uh, sit properly. Um, and it's very difficult because you need to have everything melting, having everything perfect. So we were able to clean it up. And um, we're going to go ahead and put in the new chip because the new chip has the balls that's underneath there. If we needed to program it, if there was a certain one like that, that's a whole other process. So we replaced it. Now let's go ahead and see if it works. Okay. So still need to replace the battery. We're just going to test it without plug in the battery for now because it's swollen but this model does turn on uh, with the battery so let's go ahead and check it out should be good fix it short you had about 0.74 amps which isn't a lot but it shouldn't be enough to turn it on a uh, 0.8 I should automatically turn on without a power button either all right so does power on okay so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing the repair on a MacBook Pro. If you guys have any issue with your MacBook Pro not charging, MacBook Pro not turning on, any type of liquid damage with any MacBook or any other type of logic board repair or data recovery with a MacBook, we're here to help. If you guys are interested in mail-in service, we provide that as well. All the, the contact information in the description down below. If you guys are local, come on by. We're right outside of Washington, D.C. in Alexandria, Virginia. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.